la la la. Really need some kind of opening credits. Hey, this is Crazy Aunt Julie. Trying to get crazy. <laughs> oh, like I couldn't do that on my own. Oh, nah, I just had one of those days when sleep was not agreeable. And so then, of course, so then, of course, because I couldn't sleep, I. Uh, I'm, I'm like getting up like five minutes ago, so I'm like, my voice isn't awake yet. Urgh. Oh, I hate it when you get to sleep, you wake up like an hour and a half later, and your body's like, I'm ready, and you're like, no, we only had an hour and a half sleep. I need to go back to sleep, but you're not tired now. Yeah, yeah, I am. Well, no. Hi, I'm David. I will do my absolute level best to stay awake for this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm hearing so much noise in my headphones right now. I don't want to. I don't want to not hear things, cause you know, cause I gotta hear things. But anyway, okie dokie. We are going to start with episode of scene one of episode seven. She is this one. Here it is. Allah. And, uh, and this is, you know, the, the, what we do. This is, this helps you understand just how much there is a lot of very repetitive stuff in audio drama and how much work goes into the best ones or the worst ones as well, frankly. No tea for you, then? Of course, Papa. Okay, so let's take her second time through. It's not really a terribly long scene. It's just, of course, every one of these is recorded slightly differently. And her last line would be... Well, I'm glad you haven't heard a bad one. It's just, you know... Noise. <laughs> Be safe. Okay. It's, you know, you just, you sit there and you do so much work and you never know exactly what people think until it's out in the world and, and you're like, fly, be free, my creation. <laughs> and like I said, it's been a very unsleepful day. I uh, I did post, um, and I haven't posted The Prisoner of Hancock House because it's not done yet. Because I'm short one voice and I might have to cut around it. It's my own fault for not following up and make sure, making sure I had it. But it's like, oh, come on. With everything else that's been going on, it's way too easy to get a little behind. Especially when I leave that one till the very last moment to do because it's so short and at the same time it's, you know, important. Okay. And Annie. Let's go. Yeah, not quite that much. And uh, I'll fetch tea. Off. So that's not real. And Grayson, who I'm gonna have to work on a lot. Uh, so, but anyway, like I said, it's just been a really weird day, but, uh, 
My business is inside with the professor. Yeah, I got that pretty clean yesterday. Still not perfect, but at least most of the times we hear him, there's some sort of background sound to mask the rest of that noise. In this scene, we shall have clockworks, because we're in the professor's rooms. Alrighty then. And putting together the sound. Um, but yeah, I, there was something I was, uh, I, I got a, um, well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I got a, um, comment today from somebody about crumping the devil and how they just loved when I said, you know, I don't give a flaming rat's flying anus or whatever. <laughs> One of the one of the best opening lines of a show ever, and I'm like, well, okay. Ah <laughs> uh, man, I'm willing to take those chances. Oh dear, let him in. Of course, Papa. Here. Oh dear, uh, let him in. Oh dear, let him in. Oh dear, let him in. See, part of why I wanted the professor to sound really befuddled is the fact that that Jane's got him confused right now. If she's see, Astrid is totally in the professor's imagination, and the, apparently I wasn't real clear about that. I've wanted him to be a real really, you know, absent-minded old fart. <sighs> but it works okay. But, you know, it just doesn't quite come across like he's quite that nuts that he doesn't even know that Jane... He's not even real sure that Jane's not actually his daughter. <laughs> it's like, um... You know, it helps if he sounds that crazy earlier so that it makes any kind of sense at all when he's that crazy now. Astrid? Astrid? <sighs> Astrid? Astrid? But, you know, it was kind of a crazy script and it was a last minute recasting, so there's not much to be done about that except Hope the audience gets it. And Annie runs out of the room. And actually, I'm going to take that line down a little bit here because she's trying to avoid notice by running out of the room. So, um, oh yeah, was it where you are now that the old woman talking to the girl at a, I think murder the children in the story. Wait, I'd have the old woman talking to the girl who had to murder the children and stuff. That one doesn't ring a bell from the, that description. Which one is that? Hmm. Uh. I know there's lag. That's why I'm just sort of waiting for Tea? the response. T is a bourgeoisie for sleep. Oh. <laughs> It's just such a very, very unusual uh, look at it. It's um, Where Are You Now? Where Are You Now is the name of that one. And it's such a very unusual look at that. It's like, what? And where you have to murder the children and stuff. It's like, oh, okay. I mean, because from the, the, what that's supposed, <laughs> the way I look at it is, where the the young woman who's been captured by a Texas chainsaw fa cannibal family 
has to has had a psychotic break and tries to escape. <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. T is a bourgeoisie placebo. Look at you. T is a bourgeoisie placebo. It's just funny that you know it's like, you know, it's like the, what what stands out to people T is, is, a often, is often very different. <laughs> You know, that one I actually wrote and put together in like a weekend just to see if I could. It was very early on and I didn't have anything to work on. So I decided, and that's one reason, I mean, it's it features just my voice and the two main characters. But no, no, it's fine. It's just, it makes me morbid. I'm the one who wrote it. But, <laughs> and... So it's, uh, but yeah, the, um, the idea of, uh, it just, it's just funny how, how, like I said, how people see it. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I said, because it was just me and both of the main voices, I could sit down and write the whole thing and then put it all together. And then I just had to get my friends to quickly record a few lines for the scenes and, and that worked. One thing I thought was really cool, if I remember correctly, the the two main voices, if you listen to them, they slowly swap place throughout the throughout the uh, the whole show. So they're they're slowly moving from from right to left in you know at the same time. So it's almost like like you're just sitting between them, or they're they're just changing places constantly, and. It was just, it was the first I'd ever thought of that effect. Um, excuse me. And uh, I was quite pleased with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be like, oh, here's a psychiatrist talking to somebody. But then you realize, oh, no, this is a voice in her head. Oh, she never Look did at you. get out. Lovely young like, lady like yourself, practically a servant. And why? You know, like your your uh and so but yeah, I was that was well one of the first ten episodes I did anyway. I don't remember the exact the exact order I put together my four my first ten episodes, but I had ten of them all put together when I went live. Because my, my, I believed right from the start that the only way to convince an audience that you're real is to be regular. And having 10 episodes gave me a real good idea of how long it took on the average to put them together. And, uh, and also so that I had an idea of whether I was going to continue or not. And also, it gave me a chance to uh, put them out, have a lot of them stocked up. To there put is out. no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward, to try and better oneself? God, now there's a ring in there. Hmm, almost as bad as Gerald's ring. Um. Anyway, so the... Uh, So yeah, the the uh, I had ten episodes, and that way, you know, I I was going to just you know set them out over you know the first ten, but then I got a chance with Broken Sea Audio. Um, they were looking for extra stuff because they were doing a show a day for Halloween. Hmm. And so they were they were looking to showcase other people's shows as well. So. I I gave them five shows to film. Here's that, that set month. you wanted. Uh, that that is what you wanted, is it not? What you wanted, is it not? Here's that set you requested. Here's that set you required. That is what you wanted, is it not? And so, uh, so five of my shows were in there, and so that that gave me a chance to 
you know, get some of their audience interested in my show. And then, you know, all of those episodes went straight up into my feed um, the minute that... Uh, the minute that, that the Halloween season was over, and therefore I had uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, I had a, a chunk of stuff out there, which also helps because when you put out your first episode, you can get a few people to listen, but so many people are jaded and they're like, well, it's not going to come out again, you know, or I'll wait till they got a few episodes out. Uh,. Uh, a little bit, though, right from the start, people were pretty impressed. I mean, you know, uh, but I think, I think getting, going through Broken Sea gave me a lot of people who were willing to come over and take a chance on the next episodes after they'd heard the first five. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. And that, that helped a lot just for like a booster shot to get going. And, um, and that way, you know, it, it, it really does help when you get, you know, some kind of promotion somewhere else through, you know, some place where there's a lot of, uh, of already listeners. I mean, I've managed to hold on to a lot of listeners over the years, despite the fact that for quite a while I wasn't putting out much of anything. A lot of people just didn't update their their podcast browser to remove me thank heavens but um i seen you but not me i can follow him i seen you but not me i can follow him and um but so that way um I mean, it really did give me a boost because they already had quite a large audience and, and it was a big party thing. It showed, you know, I was part of the community and all why that. Why would you, why would you, why would you? So that, you know, it's like, oh, look, they're part of the Halloween spirit and everything. So it was, it was pretty fun. And, uh, maybe this, what is that? Oh, I can follow him. He's seen you, but not me. Oh, I can follow him. He's seen you, but not me. Oh, I yeah, let's do that. And then this. And then this. And then that. Okay, let's see how that sounds. <laughs> As I'm seeing here. Uh, have you thought of sharing your stuff with the Wicked Library? Uh, I've never even heard of it. Uh, if you could drop me a link on Facebook, that would be best. I'm not on the computer that I use for most stuff when I do this. So, um, yeah, but if, if there's, there is still a divide between audio books and audio drama enough of the time. Um, you know, and what I do with, you know, audio book stuff is more or less, ugh, stop that, I want to turn off the solo, is, is generally, you know, paid stuff. I am, I, I put out another episode of The Narrator's Mouth today. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Uh, let him in. Of course, Papa. Astrid? Or fetch tea, sir, Mum. Or fetch tea, sir, Mum. Oh, I didn't realize I was taking that line twice. Uh... Will you have a seat, sir? Tea? Tea is a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's a lapsang souchon. Look at you, lovely young lady like yourself, practically a servant. And why? Dunno. Why? Because you happen to be born a woman. Oh, is that why? There is no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward, to try and better oneself? Here's that set you requested. Uh, that is uh, what you wanted, is it not? The revolution will thank you. No, 
No tea for you then? I'm off. What? He's seen you, but not me. Or oh, I can follow him. Why would you... Right, go on. And be safe. I mean, obviously there's sound effects to put in here, but, uh... Oh, I, I just have to take a look at it is all. I mean, certain things fit with other concepts and certain things don't. And you never know until you look at what whatever it is that they're they're working on. All right, so first off, we had Grayson at the door here. Jane was kind of near him. Annie's toward the back. Actually, Annie's going to do some of the most moving around in the scene. And the professor's just over here somewhere. Um, looks like Haddock slept today, too. Because, you know, usually he's here. So it's just one of them days when everybody gets to sleep. Unless it's Friday. <laughs> um... I was still catching up on all the work I missed because of the, uh, all my real work that I missed because I was, uh, sick. And that is so much fun, trying to get everything caught up. Oh, my God. All right. Now, let's see. We'll save this one and then move on to, you know, save with, save with effects. And I just put the clockwork track in because some of the sounds in this were going to drive me crazy. Some of the background noise that I wasn't able to get out of some of the tracks. So the professor, he's, actually, he's going to move too. Let's make him move first. So, um, because he's closest to the bottom. <laughs> uh need some feet now I've still got all my feet over here he'll just move across the room and as usual I don't want to cut it off right next to the foot because you have to leave a little room to catch the 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 extra you know the reverb the bounce of the foot um, otherwise you know it, it gets cut off and sounds weird Here's that. And I need a sound of something metallic. Which I know I don't have there yet. Oh, you are here. Okay, you're just lurking. I was just wondering because, you know, I was so tired today. And my my day was so interesting. I, I literally, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and get to sleep. At my normal time, I get to sleep. I wake up an hour and a half later and I'm like, wait, no, I don't want to be awake now. And my body's like, ah, you're awake. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go back to sleep. I could get up now and go drive over and get my mail at 1030 in the morning. But instead, I'm going to try to go back to sleep. If I'm still up in an hour, I'll go get my mail. Two hours later, I'm still up. I'm like, fine, I'll go get my mail. Get back from getting the mail. I'm like practically falling asleep. I'm like, come on, why couldn't I have slept earlier? Brains are just so weird sometimes. I have the hardest time ever shutting my brain down. I really do. What's well, going to sound like a bunch of cogs? I could use some coins. I haven't made my coin sounds. I mean, everybody got to hear my my coin collection over here old foreign coins that I got as a a package just to make sound effects with I haven't made them yet it's weird having to make um coins because what does this sound like Hello. Apparently it doesn't sound like anything today. OK, 
Okay, that one really is broken. Let's see what else we got. Um, not quite what I want, but I'll use it. Actually, some of that would work, I think. Anyway, because it's in a bag, that helps too. Um, but the... Uh, I'm going to make a whole bunch of different coin noises of one sort and another to, to help with uh, the, the Trial of Myriad. And probably also just make the package available to friends. I, I need to find out where I can sell things like that if I make, you know, like a bunch of sound effects. Because it seems like... It seems like the kind of thing that, that would actually be... Um, is uh, what you want. And I don't want quite as much of a... Oh, yeah, and I need to do some adjusting on this timing here. Just before I do anything further. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Uh, let him in. Of course, Papa. Astrid? Or fetch tea, sir. My He's supposed to sound really quizzical here. I just, my, my instructions weren't Astrid? Or fetch tea, sir. Mum, will you have a seat, sir? Tea? That's too long of a gap to be funny. Tea is a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's a lap saying Souchon. Look at you, lovely young lady like yourself, practically a servant. And why? I don't know. Why? Again, that's too much of a gap. This should be snappier. Why? Because you happen to be born a woman. Oh, is that why? There is no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward? To try and better oneself? Here. I can't help it. I'm really taken with the line. It's a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's that sang <laughs> That... I, I think I'm hilarious, though. Me and my my witty, witty script stuff. Uh, what you wanted, is it not? The revolution will thank you. No, no tea for you, then. I'm off. What? And there's actually a break here. And that's important. I've got to put some stuff in there. Anyway, so, yeah, there's the professor's movement, and and the professor just stands there after that. Okay. And then this dude, Grayson, he's got movement. And his movement. He's over to the side. Uh, let's see. I need feet. So he first steps in. Just putting it there for placement so I don't have to like drag it around. Talks, talks, blah, 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 takes the thing here. So I need a second sound of. That. With him. As he pockets it. And then he walks out and slams the door. And I'm going to speed up his footsteps because he's in a rush now. So to do that, I'm going to take out just a little bit of the time here. And you notice I take it, as I've said before, from prior to a step rather than right after a step because I want to let as much of the reverb of the step remain. Well, thank you. 
No, no tea. But I want one more step because reasons for a second here, I'll show you. So let's go add one more step. A tea for you then. Because I want the slam of the door to come right on his, right on hers last word there. Just for the amusement value. Well, it, it, it takes out the time between them, so it does speed them up. I can also run, you know, change tempo on them. But it's not going to make it sound like running. Running really does sound different. I mean, you can kind of fake it. But at least this way, I've sped it up so it sounds like he's walking faster. And, and actually, not that one. That one doesn't sound right for this door. Um, this is the slam I want. But it, it just, it, it changes it from being, you know, a normal walking and? speed to being a, a, a faster walk. And, I mean, I could also tempo it up, but to tempo it up to the point where it sounded faster, it takes quite a shift. And anytime you can do it manually, rather than by shifting the sound around, is better because it's not going to screw with the, the noise. It's not going to digitally alter it too much. No, no tea for you then. Then. Okay, there's his sound. Now, now Jane actually doesn't move hardly at all, so she's fine. Now Annie moves. And Annie runs out of the room first. Quickly. This is what Annie does best. She ducks and hides. <laughs> And now I'm going to alter hers both by doing the, the you know, cutting out some of the sound and by um, so I'm going to cut out a little just before the, the actual strike of the next step. To speed it up that much would take a huge change in tempo. That's why I'm just cutting it out rather than changing the tempo. Because uh, right off the bat, because... Mom, will you have a seat, sir? Tea? And... Tea, sir. Mom, will you have a seat, sir? Tea? And that way, it's, you know, it... it Let's see here. Actually, let's let's see how that would work. Here we go with the same track. It's like a fun experiment. Let's see how much uh, change of tempo. Now remember, tempo doesn't speed it up like chipmunks, but it still does. It still does change it. And so if I changed it by thirty percent, okay, it'd be a thirty percent change to get to that same amount. I mean, it's, it's very similar, but it changes also the strike of each foot as well as the space between them. Yes, bunny. Oh, I love you too. Everybody loves you, bunny. But I need my hand. No, I really do. Silly. <laughs> Oh, it's just so cute when she wants to sit with me. And um, and then we have Annie coming back in over here. And she's going to, as soon as the door shuts, she comes back in. She stops here and then is out again. 
And the, the reasoning, you know, she ducked out before he got a good look at her. Oh, say you had a character that was dragging a foot. I actually had to do that um, uh, for the Thrice Told Bell. I had, I had to make up a special footstep track for uh, the guy with the wooden leg. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, what I would probably do is, you know, take a core footstep track like this, and I'd want to do enough of it so I didn't have to do it over and over again. But take something like this piece. And I'd have to make the noise that I want for the footstep. I'd have to find or make a noise and just replace every other footstep with it and also presumably change the length of the stride on one of them. So that, for instance, if I... Let's see. What kind of special effects do I have in here? I don't think I've got anything that... Uh, oh, sure, why not? Uh, let's see what happens. <sighs> oh, no. If, for instance, uh, I decided to do this, as just, you know, an example. Now, there would probably also be a change here in the stride right before that. So, you'd be putting it before the, uh, I'm assuming the, the dragging leg would be the slow one. So you'd end up sounding like this. I mean, obviously that's not quite what you want, but you know what I mean? That gets you the idea of, of how it would work. And, uh, it's, it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, you, and you'd have to, you know, alter that for, whatever kind of needs you had. I know I did something like that. I think I did, I just took like a footstep and then like something else. Yeah, it's it's pretty simple to do something like that. It's just, you know, you gotta fiddle with it till it sounds the way you want it to. But there's so many different ways to do things like that that are quite simple, really. Um, back to here. Okay, Annie, Annie, and then a door shut at the end of that. Oh, but I need the door open as well. Opening. Okay. and then move that. And then we'll do a little bit of fiddling and see how this sounds. Okay. So I'm gonna save this as moving. And yeah, I mean, part of it is just, you know, closing your eyes and imagining how a sound should sound and then trying to figure out what each of the pieces of it is, you know? And I know that sounds kind of like, oh, wait a minute, uh, you know, it's like, but it, it, it is. I mean, you, you, like, you want to do something like, oh, here's somebody collapsing to the floor and taking the table with them. You know, you got to have, if, you know, like at a dining room or something, you want to have a tablecloth noise and maybe some china and a body falling and wood falling. And, you know, I mean, complicated sounds do require a lot of stuff, but they're really not 
as hard as they sound. Okay, so Annie is actually, she moves quite a lot because she starts here, she goes to there, she goes like right out of the room here. Annie, Steamboat Annie, Ship of Dreams. Oh, bup, bup, bup. And then she moves again. Uh, across the room. Here. And then one more time to go out the door. Wait, that one. Uh, I posted on my Facebook page and on the 19 Nocturne page links to well, theoretically, at least, my short films, but at least one of them isn't public. I told the, uh, the, the the director said it was, so I'm assuming that's a mistake. And if you go there, you can watch them both. Um, and the, the short films that I wrote that she directed. And then, uh, uh, let's see, now there's Annie. And then... Um, Grayson, he just moves in and out, so. Uh, and so it, it's, uh, if you want to go see those, I also, there's also an animation somebody did. He used my reading of The Hound by H.P. Lovecraft and did an animation, and it's really cool. It really is. I'm very excited. I mean, it's just one of those things that you just, you don't expect, and then it's like, boom, look, somebody did an animation. You're like, oh my god, that's awesome. Oh, did you? I thought it was pretty cool. I liked his, um, <coughs> his visuals there. I thought he had some very lovely visuals. And wait, did I move those? Yeah. And last but not least, the professor crosses the room. Oops, I meant to do this. Oops, okay. Oh, no, wrong, wrong, that. What I just did, what I realized, um, just so you know, is when I mixed it, I came down here and saw that it was really tall and I realized what I had done was I had duplicated it, then mixed it. And so it had mixed like two copies and was like super loud. That's hard to explain, but it is something you might notice at some point. Actually, let's do that again just so I can show you so that, you know, you can see. Because see, if I took this and I accidentally hit Control D and duplicated first and then went, oops, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, but I didn't undo it. When you duplicate, it stays selected. So then I hit uh, mix and, and it's like way outside the edges. And I'm like, why is that so loud? It's because it mixed both sets of tracks, the originals and the duplicates. So this is twice as loud as it should be. So uh, I can imagine, I can imagine that the animation must take uh, forever to do. But anyway, I was just pointing that out so that if you ever do that, then you'll know what to look for. It'll be like, why is that so big? Well, it's because you duplicated it and that's, you know, it's, that's the problem. And, uh, because part of, part of troubleshooting is just kind of knowing what sort of problems are possible so that when they come up, you can go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I heard about this. I think I know what this is. And and also, 
the more different problems you see and kind of understand, the easier it is to deal with them if they happen to you at some point in real time. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put the room tone on. I am that confident that I'm going to do it after I just did all this crazy shit without even listening to it first. And because uh, I'm perfect. I'm not perfect because I'm confident. <laughs> all right, now let's listen to the scene. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Let him in. Astrid? What the heck? Oh, her voice is muted. How silly. Oh, and so is the clockwork. Nothing should be mo mo mooted, muted at this point. Let's start that again. There we go. I was wondering why it was so quiet. Oh, there's my bunny. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Let him in. Of course, Papa. Astrid? Oh, fetch tea, sir. Mum, will you have a seat, sir? Tea? Tea is a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's a lapsang souchon. Look at you, lovely young lady like yourself, practically a servant. And why? I don't know. Why? Because you happen to be born a woman. Oh, is that why? There is no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward, to try and better oneself? Here's that set you requested. Uh, that is uh, what you wanted, is it not? The revolution will thank you. No, no tea for you then. I'm off. What? He's seen you, but not me. Or oh, I can follow him. Why would you... Right, go on. And be safe. Okay. I need to change a little bit. Couple of things in Annie's tracks, of course. Okay. Now, rather than start over with Annie's tracks, because that's, of course, the earth to get back to these being normal, I'd have to go so many steps backwards. I'm going to open. The previous version, actually, no, cancel you. Uh, voices edited FX, which will be here in my recent files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orphan files, blah, blah, blah. Annie. And copy Annie's stuff. And come back in here and paste it. And I have to remix this. Everything else I thought sounded pretty good. Uh, I think I want Grayson's footsteps were not really very loud, so I want him to come up some. Um, not sure why they were quite so quiet, but anyway, um, let's see. And then I'll get rid of these versions of Annie's track. Of course, it would be the one I had to move around the most. So, because what I want to do, I realized I want her to be around for Jane, most of Jane's last line. So, which is here. Not leaving at the end of Annie's line. What? Right, go on. And be safe. A little bit farther. She wouldn't just walk out while she's talking. Right, go on. And be safe. That's much more like Annie. And the opening of the door needs to be over here as well. And it actually needs to be here. It's a little bit weird, but it'll work. So then I need to remix Annie's track. And then move her around again. 
<laughs> it's just because she moves through so many places in the in the scene. Because she goes from here out this way, comes back over, and then goes out the door here. Uh, and I think I'm going to add... meant to be a nothing. I'm going to add one sound for her, which is something, a reason for her to linger at this level, which is going to be um, putting on a shawl or something. So I want, because she's going outside. And so, you know, a reason for her to pause there for a second would be that. And so let's go to FX. Of course, now, where do I have the sound I want? Kitchen, music, office, doorstep. I know the sound I'm looking. Oh, there it is. Robe heavy fabric. Always a good generic noise for something fabric related. It's nice to have at least one generic noise for things that you know you're going to do repeatedly because simple things like that don't have to sound different every time. You know? You don't have to have a, a, a unique sound for every time you're you're moving something that is fabric. And so something like that is particularly just like, eh, it's just there. So she says, you know. He's seen you, but not me. Oh, I can follow him. You know, Why it just sounds like you... she's pulling on a coat kind of thing. And... Okay, let's see how this sounds then. Now... We're going to try the reverb again. Sometime I'm going to have to make that chaining thing work, but I'm not trying it again right now because it kept crashing before. Okay, here we go. Hey, little buddy. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Uh, let him in. Of course, Papa. Astrid? Oh, fetch tea, sir. Mom, will you have a seat, sir? T? T is a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's a lapsang souchon. Look at you, lovely young lady like yourself, practically a servant. And why? I don't know. Why? Because you happen to be born a woman. Oh, is that why? There is no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward, to try and better oneself? Here's that set you requested. Uh, that is uh, what you wanted, is it not? The revolution will thank you. No, no tea for you then. I'm off. What? He's seen you, but not me. Oh, I can follow him. Why would you... Right, go on. And be safe. Still not quite happy with the timing right at the end here. I need to pull some of this together. I'm going to save this as, because I'm going to take it one more step here so I don't screw this up but at the same time I get I mean this is a pretty busy scene but it is important the moving of everything is actually important um, I'm gonna save that somewhere else uh, I think we're okay with Grayson and the professor will uh, mix those down. Oh, I'll get rid of this for now. Um, and then Annie. 
Oh, no, it's the professor. I'm not happy with him. But that's okay. I can live that. Talking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have his Sign of impending craziness. This door isn't quite where I want it, and neither is the professor's voice. So let's see. Um, let me put the Annie's all together. And this way I can see everything at once without it being all spread all over the screen. Because what I want is, there's no reason, it, it, he's, his line is inconsequential. It's a toss away line. They're ignoring him, so it should be just sort of in the middle here. And therefore, all of this movement, because this is, oops, not quite that far. This is a quick movement to get out of the scene. I just want to make sure it ends at the right place. Yeah. And actually the door could stay there. Let's see how this sounds. Just He's seen you, but not me. Or oh, I can follow Why him. Why would you? Right, go on. And be safe. There. Because that just tightens that all up. Otherwise it was way too, too lax. It was too far apart on everything. And this needs to be tight. I mean, because Annie is rushing out the door to go follow this guy. And be safe. And I want this door noise to be a little bit louder. Okay. But you see, timing is so huge sometimes, and other times it totally doesn't matter. And that's just knowing when you're you're having you know because when you feel that lag and you don't know why you know something has to change and sometimes it's just not real clear what that something's got to be and one last time through the scene My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. Uh, let him in. Of course, Papa. Astrid? Oh, fetch tea, sir. Mum, will you have a seat, sir? Tea? Tea is a bourgeoisie placebo. No, it's a lap saying Souchon. Look at you. Lovely young lady like yourself. Practically a servant. And why? I don't know. Why? Because you happen to be born a woman. Oh, is that why? There is no way to rise above your birth. Is it such a crime to aim upward? To try and better oneself? Here's that set you requested. Uh, that is uh, what you wanted, is it not? The revolution will thank you. No, no tea for you then. I'm off. What? He's seen you, but not me. Or oh, I can follow Why him. Why would you... Right, go on. And be safe. So you see how much that you know, tightens the scene and really rounds it off. I mean, a lot happens in one scene. I mean, right now, this guy is probably whoever it is who's, who's, you know, commissioning the killer, the killer robots, <laughs> such as they are. And, you know, because he just got a set of cogs that no one else knows about from the crazy old professor who really doesn't know what he's doing. And so, you know, it's, a lot going on. And of course we've been hearing about the man with the black beard at the crime scenes and everything as well. So there's always that. So I'm going to mix and copy and unmix and paste it into our finals here. Let's make some space, bring it over the end of the opening credit music. Oops, nope, not quite there. My business is inside with the professor. Oh, dear. So, there we go. Alright. And, uh, oh, I've got to go get the 
where did I leave the collection of in-between music? I think I left that in episode. No, I think I left that in music. Traditional. Transitional. I can't spell. There we go. Paste those in. <laughs> Save us some time. Yeah, you just hear it, and that's that is you know all all it is a lot of the time is learning how to. Let's see, what's the next scene? The next scene in the police. Yeah, I want this one. Um. I'm just gonna shove, you know, come here. Shove those all down one. And put the police music. Well, it's not really the police music, it's just the music I want to transition into the police. Be safe. And I want that a little tighter. I mean everybody's Be safe. Everybody has their own ideas on how they want to do transitions. And I, me, I keep them really tight because I want things to move snappily, you know. Sometimes I, you know, keep them short. Sometimes I keep them long. I would try never to go more than 15 seconds because that feels like an awful long time. Unless it rounds out a piece of music. I mean, you know, you don't want to cut off a transition in the middle of it. But at the same time, 15 seconds is this is, wait, no, 15 seconds is, well, this one's almost 15 seconds, and it's the longest one I've got. It's amazing how much time some of them think, some of them feel, though, how long they feel. I got brains, I got words, I got the best words. We Americans got the biggest, bigly words, the best words. God, am I losing my brain because... Our government is sucking all our intelligence away. Sometimes, I tell you. Okay, so we've got that much. And, uh... Oh! I mean, the next scene is so short, it's like I'm tempted to do it just to get it out of the way. Let's just do it. Screw it. Now that we're here. Cops voices. I mean, in this, there's really not much to it, which is makes it simple. Um, it's mostly drab. And I'll just bring him down. So he's all pointy. That's why I got to take him up. Uh, we'll save. And then save as... And yeah, dead space. I mean, you, 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 there's times when you want a pause, and there's times when a pause is just deadly. And it's sometimes really hard to tell which one you're in. Uh, I mean, if in doubt, you know, ask a listener. Because you won't always hear, see, it's just like if you edit your own uh, writing, a lot of times you don't really hear what you wrote. You're hearing or you're reading what you think you wrote. For in two days, all wealthy, all apparently murdered by a new member of uh, their uh, household. For I like that one. Whoops. That was me pushing too Household. many buttons. Almost as if the revolution has come. Almost as if the revolution has come. Almost as if the revolution has come. Almost. Fields. Almost. Fields. 
Almost. Fields! Did the stream just... Not that I know of? Uh, uh... Uh, not sure where to check. Let me see. Uh, it says I'm live. Uh... Sorry about that. We're having trouble. Fields. Our, uh, oh, Get apparently. me the Chinaman. Get 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 me the Chinaman. It's like what? Is... Get me the Chinaman. Fine now. Okay. Cool. It, you know, it's I'm I'm new enough to all this that I have no idea if something goes wrong what to do. <laughs> so, ooh, okay. Sir. Almost Sir? as if the revolution is coming. Sir. Almost. Sir. Uh, there's a lot of noise in this track. What happens if I used my noise profile? Sir? Didn't help. It's not his. Um, just buffering without the buffering icon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I suppose that could happen. I'm going to be silly here. And let's see. Sir? Oh. Sir? Let's see. It's a matter of figuring out which sir fits which blank. Drab's really not paying attention. He's far more... He's musing. Oops. Blah, 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 blah. I cannot hit keys today. Okay, let's see how this sounds. Their uh, household. Sir? Almost as if the revolution has come. Sir? Almost. Fields! Sir? Get me the Chinaman. Actually, this is definitely the surfer here. And I think this one... Sir? Get... There we have a normal one here. Fields! Sir? Why do I write characters that just say sir all the time? Jun is like that too, though he gets... A lot more going on in the second season of Fatal Girl. What did I just do to my flippin'... Ugh. I hate when screens vanish up the top. What the hell did I do? Well, yeah, you get no... Oh, yeah, no performance info on the dashboard. That sucks. Four. In two days, all wealthy, all apparently murdered by a new member of... Uh, their uh, household. Sir? Almost as if the revolution has come. Sir? Almost. Fields! Sir? Get me the Chinaman. Okay. Blank that. Now they're in a cab. Except that right now I have no stup... I want... I don't know what I pushed. I hate when this happens. I don't know how to get back to stupid. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Give me my top bar back so I can minimize. 
I can't get out of this screen now, this stupid bullshit. I hate that. I want all my my bars back. Ugh. What did I push? Ooh. That's not what I want. Well, it's probably time to wrap up the thing now because now I'm just going to be screaming at it for a while until I can get my stupid toolbars back so that I can minimize the screen and get to other screens and things. I hate when it does this. It's like it goes full screen without asking because I pushed some damn button combination and I got to figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and end here before I start cussing mildly. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yay! It's so much fun. But at least 